What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we have all of the news in regards to the initial part of the anniversary. Now uh, pretty much it seems all but confirmed at this point that there is going to be additional Sugo Fests that are going to come out over the next couple of weeks. Um, that are going to combine into this anniversary. So don't see this anniversary as, you know, it's just Luffy and Yamato and Odin and Toki and that's it. It does appear to be that there is going to be more coming. But um, today, it's only 24 hours out from the big Sugo Fest. And of course, I will be live streaming and I will be doing pulls on part one. Probably not the best idea to do so, but that's what we're going to be doing. So if you guys are interested in that, come over to the stream. Also, the new game mode, Pirate King Adventures, debuts tomorrow as well, which we're going to be testing out for the first time. So let's go ahead and kick it in with this video talking about the SugoFest news. Uh, obviously, 15% chance to get a legend on any given poster, which is pretty typical for a Super SugoFest. And you do notice that it says Luffy Part 1, Luffy Part 2, Luffy Part 3. It means that there's probably going to be uh, additional parts coming out. I would assume a Sanji part and a Zoro part are on the horizon. That would be my assumption at this point. Um, this Sugo Fest is going from May 11th until June 24th. So there is quite a long time that this Sugo Fest is active for. So you may want to, you know, keep this in the back of your mind. You may want to, you know, consider, you know, if you do want to wait and see what else comes out for the anniversary and then go back to pull for a unit you want to go for, that may be an option that you can do. Um, it also says, you know, that, you know, the new characters are available. The new Luffy and Yamato will not have an evolution form and will only appear as a six star rarity. Um, but the thing about Luffy and Yamato that's kind of interesting that a lot of people were bringing to our attention is that with the additional artworks of the character, now I believe it's here on this Blitz Battle page, you can see like the boosted list for the characters that are boosted for the upcoming Blitz Battle, which we'll talk about soon. But for Luffy and Yamato, the new artwork version of the character actually has a different ID. So this is the current form of the character as we know it. 3878 is the ID. And just look at the character's name, by the way. Luffy and Yamato declaring war on the demon. So keep that in mind. When you go over to the other version of the character, and this is the artwork that I actually prefer. I think this one is way cooler. The, art, the artwork ID is 3877, so different ID and the name prepared for the final showdown. The fact that both of these units, they are the same units, except for the artwork ID and name. Other than that, they're the exact same units, right? But the fact that they are different IDs and different names means that you can actually have two copies of this unit, one as one ID, one as another, and then what you can do is is have one on one team and one on another team in a treasure map for example so you can have you know two different teams with a luffy and yamato on it but what it also means in grand party you could have one luffy and yamato on one team and another luffy and yamato on another team which is just absurd to think about that you can have multiple different luffy's and yamato's on multiple different squads in all of these different game modes i think it's honestly a big problem and something that they probably overlooked that people would often do that so this is honestly kind of scary moving forward into the future. I don't like that this is a thing. Um, but in the Sugo Fest, you can pull the unit as either form of Luffy and Yamato. You can pull the, the base form, the 3878, or you can pull the new stylized artwork as well. And in order to get the new artwork, you can switch between them by using the new ink effect pen. We don't know how you actually receive these items yet, but you can actually get the, the different artwork if you do so choose but it does require you to use this new item, which we don't know how to get yet. It does also mention in this Sugo Fest that for parts two and three, there are only restricted amounts of Super Sugo Fest exclusives. So on part two, which is the part featuring Luffy and Yamato, you can also get access to Legend Uta, Roger and Whitebeard, as well as Strength Odin. Those three Super Sugos are pullable alongside Luffy and Yamato. And then on part three, which is the part that features Odin and Toki, you can pull Kaido vs Yamato, the green super tandem luffy green final tap law and goldie roger the psi one so honestly the the amount or the like the level of super sugos that are pullable here it's interesting because it means that there's a lot of super sugo fests that are not going to be rate boosted on parts which means that the future parts of this anniversary likely will feature those other units that's the way that i think about it moving forward here 
Anyways, um, we can scroll down here. It does mention about a free multi that we're going to get access to. So when the Sugo Fest goes live, you can get a free multi, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and it talks about the new characters, of course, and where they're going to be boosted. But we'll talk about that in a moment. But this is also something to note, too. So part one of the Sugo Fest, I believe, to my knowledge, every legend is actually pullable. But there is going to be a small pool of them that are going to be rate boosted that have a higher chance to be pulled. So even though, uh, you know, characters like Legend Nami, for example, is one that I was looking out for, Legend Nami is not boosted on this Sugo Fest at all, but she is pullable on part one, but her rates are going to be very bad because every other legend is pullable. But have a look at this, right? Part one of the Sugo Fest goes until June 24th. However, parts two and three actually conclude on June 9th. So what this means is, is that on June 9th, we're likely getting another part to the anniversary Sugo Fest that is going to last from June 9th until June 24th. That's the way that I see it. So do keep an eye out on that. That could be important. Um, but yeah, just wanted to, to state that to you guys, that if you are looking to wait to pull on this Sugo Fest, remember that Luffy and Yamato are not guaranteed on part one. They're not guaranteed at all. Um, but they are guaranteed on part two, but then part two is going to be leaving on the 9th of June. So if you do want to wait to do polls, you can wait until the very last moment to try and get that unit. If you are opting to do that, just wanted to make sure all of your options were open heading forward into the Sugo Fest. Okay. So now we can talk about who's actually boosted on each of the parts. I might actually make a separate video as well, talking about which part ultimately is better to be pulling on here. But remember, as I said, part one of the Sugo Fest, all legends appear to be pullable, but certain amount of them will be rate boosted. So you've got rate boosted Super Sugo, Luffy and Yamato, as well as Toki and Odin and Anniversary Legend Ace, which is actually really cool. And this does ultimately confirm that Odin and Toki are indeed anniversary exclusive characters. In terms of the generic legends that are actually pullable and are rate boosted pullable, you've got this pool of characters here. Uh, a lot of misses, to be to be honest, not a lot of good units, but there are definitely some cool ones like uh, Raylene Gaban, Film Red Chopper, Super Tandem Law, Halloween Law, and honestly, Wano Law. You got a pretty good pool there, but most of the characters are not ideal to get. Um, all these anniversary characters are actually pullable too, um, but they, these ones are not rate boosted. They are pullable, but not rate boosted, as well as all of the Super Sugo Fest characters on part one, they're pullable, not rate boosted. So their rates are going to be very low. So if you do end up pulling on part one and you get one of these units, be very happy because the chances to get them are very low compared to the rest. And then eventually when there's the limited pool a Super Sugo unit on part one, this is what you get access to, which is not a terrible pool, honestly. All these characters are great, fantastic units. Now, part two is a bit different because on part two of the Sugo Fest, there, you can't pull every legend. On part two, there is only a finite list of characters you can pull. So for part two, they're featuring Luffy, Yamato, Uta, Roger, Whitebeard, and Strength Odin. Then for the anniversary units, you got Sabo, Zoro, and K-Dad, not too bad. And then for the generic legends, you have these units pullable only. Uh, definitely lots of bad ones in here, but a couple of good ones, some good for Grand Voyage and stuff like that. Some generically good units too, but... It's not the best pool of legends, I'll admit. This pool of legends isn't really that amazing. It's not wowing me, honestly. And then you've got the limited pool, and then the super limited Sugo Rare Step, which features the anniversary units, the super Sugos, and stuff like that. Now, for part three, remember that part three is featuring Odin and Toki with the anniversary stuff, so it means that they do add an additional Super Sugo Fest unit here. So you've got Kaido Yamato, the, the, the Dex Luffy, Dex Law, and Roger. Uh, it's fine. Uh, half of the units are really good. I mean, Roger's really nice to have. If you're a beginner, Roger is fantastic to get a hold of for sure. But uh, definitely, you know, probably not what you're looking for, honestly. I don't really suggest pulling on this part anyway, specifically for Odin and Toki. You should only really pull on this part if you're looking for the other Super Sugo Fest exclusives or the other anniversary units, because Odin and Toki, they're fine, but I don't think like they're amazing by any stretch. You got the other generic legend pull that are pullable here. Um... It's fine. You've got, uh, you know, Strength Dofi's good. Hiori is fantastic, to be honest. Um, who else have you got here? I mean, V2 Big Mom is interesting because V2 Big Mom is about to receive her Super Evolution and you can get free copies of her by playing Rumble this season, which is interesting. Uh, you got a couple of good units, I suppose. And then, of course, you've got the, uh, the limited step. And then you've got all parts will be featuring these rare recruits, including the whole new batch with Usopp. Robin and Nami. Okay, so next we have the ninth anniversary Blitz battle that this is actually really interesting the way that they're doing it. So you can see that one point is the ranking period. So from May 19th to May 21st, that is the period of time where you want to be playing as much as you can to get as high ranked as possible to receive the best rewards. 
However, the event is still going to be lasting until June 4th, so it means that if you need to clear it for Chopper Man missions to receive certain rewards, you are still able to do that post the event period. I like that they're doing that because a lot of people are still trying to re-roll their accounts or get their accounts sorted, and a lot of people aren't going to have their accounts sorted during this ranking period of Blitz Battle, so it means that if people get their accounts sorted and they can play the Blitz Battle in their own time after the ranking period, they can still receive the reward, so I actually kind of dig that. And this is really cool cool too so this bottom paragraph mentions the newly added pirate king adventures can store up to three days worth of adventure stamina so during the ranking period of may 19th to may 21st you can focus on the blitz battle that's a really cool uh thing that they've added because people they know that people are going to go crazy on the blitz battle so they may not have a lot of time to actually play this new game mode that comes out yes the new game mode is going to be from may 12th onwards and we know that you know you can kind of play it at your own pace so i don't think it's that big of a deal anyway but the fact that this is here is is just a nice touch in terms of the rewards in this blitz battle it looks pretty typical looking you know you've got the the top 1000 get the ranker title the contenders for the top 30k worldwide you got the worldwide alliance ranking you've got your ranking within the english french korean version of the game you got another alliance ranking like it's it's just pretty typical stuff nothing really amazing this is cool though, you can get uh, access to some more stamina meats, which of course you can use in the new Pirate King Adventures game mode. At least I believe you can use the small meats, I assume you can, but still getting more stamina is a nice thing to have. And then of course we have access to the new free-to-play Kaido, which we did talk about in my video yesterday. This character is actually very good, and this character will be super evolving. And from what I've been told, the super evolution skills for this unit are pullable from the Kizuna that is going to happen later on. So the skills are going to be out, you can super evolve this guy, and he's going to be even better than what he already currently is, which is so good. And then of course you have the boosted list for this, uh, for this Blitz battle. So you've got the new legends as the highest boosted, you've got the rare recruits as a really high boost, and then as well as, you know, some of the other free-to-play units, the Marco, the Roger from the new game mode, as well as the 5 plus Luffy. You still got another whole good batch of characters here. The Psy Straw Hats are a very interesting one, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And you've got a really decently big boosted list here too. So uh, when this Blitz Battle goes live, uh, I may be busy around this time period, but we've got to wait and see. I'm looking forward to playing this either way. Uh, so yeah, definitely look out for that one. We're going to be playing this Blitz Battle for sure. So you can see that the Pirate King Adventures game mode, it says it's starting at May 11th, 1900 PST time when the Sugo Fest goes live tomorrow. But it does conclude on June 14th, so it is only going to be a month period to play this game mode. And of course we get access to the new Roger, which we talked about in yesterday's video. And of course, when this game mode does go live, I'll be making videos in regards to how this is going to work. Because look, no one has played this yet aside from our tutorial. So this is going to be pretty fresh for a lot of people out there. So we're going to be streaming this as it goes live and we'll be trialing out this new content and seeing how it actually works. It does give you a bit of flavor text as to how this is supposed to work, but... Without actually playing the game, it's actually very difficult to understand how, like, what's the most optimal way to play this game mode. There's different, um, different points you can land on the map, you've got your treasures, your favorites, events, and stuff. We'll likely go over most of this in, in the video, uh, when we actually get to play it ourselves. Um, but interestingly to note, um, the rewards from this are relatively similar to the turtle farming event. You've got legend tickets, you've got uh, level limit break, wanted posters, gems, keys, super cola, which is the big thing with the, with the ship upgrades, of course, and bounty. Now, there is a list of trusty characters, and this is the thing I was really concerned about. Because in the tutorial, when we played against the bosses, they gave us a tutorial team and the boss just charged our specials to max, which was a good thing. However, I am a little concerned that, you know, these boss fights that we may have to encounter in this new game mode, uh, if you're not using these characters that have cooldown reduction, how difficult are these bosses actually going to be? And I'm actually relatively concerned and I really hope that it's more about just beating bosses based on the gimmicks and not having to worry about cooldown as much. Um, and look, you can see here that these characters do give you additional drops at the end of the quest, which I think makes perfect sense. You know, I'm completely fine with characters having boosted stats and being able to give you additional drops. But I feel like if, as long as they don't force you to use this boosted list to actually beat the content in general, that's what I'm most concerned about. And I hope that it doesn't come down to that. Because it does also say here, you know, for the, for the trusty characters at the top, three additional item drops, 1.5 times stats, 
minus 15 cooldown, which is a lot, adds four additional item drops and boosts stats by 1.7 during the map when you land on a bonus hex. That seems ridiculous uh, to get those amount of boosts during one little bonus hex. So I guess if you're doing the bonus one, maybe having these new units could be good for that. Uh, we're not really too certain exactly how, how it's supposed to work yet. Then you've got, you know, the rare recruits, which do a very similar thing. This Marco uh, it gives you additional stuff, and then it, it trickles down to previous batches, free-to-play Luffy, Uta, and Odin. And then you've got a little bit of uh, free-to-play units here, which is, I guess, actually kind of cool. All the previous characters that are also farmable and that you could purchase from the Pirate King Adventures shop, they're actually boosters for this, which is actually really cool. So I hope that that continues to be a thing moving forward. And then it does obviously mention these characters you can purchase with tickets. Uh, and there's also some, some other subsidiary rules which you can go through here. But again, it's hard to really discuss how good or bad this game mode is going to be unless we actually get the opportunity to play it. So I am very excited to give it a go. This is also something cool that was added today with a new login bonus. So if you log in starting tomorrow and you have... So from May 11th to June 9th, you have 15 days to log in in that little period. And if you log in every single day, you get a total of 50 rainbow gems and three legend tickets so there are so many gems just flying around during this anniversary period even if you're not like logging in to play the game just log in and pick up your mail every single day because the amount of rewards that you get is crazy so during this period this is the best opportunity to get as many rewards as possible and if you don't even want to pull that is fine but as long as you're logging in and conserving these gems for when you need to pull that's going to be massive so make sure to keep logging in another reason why you should be logging in every day is that every single day starting tomorrow when the sugo fest goes live there's going to be a daily lottery and depending on your luck you could actually get some pretty cool rewards so you see that you know down the bottom there aren't really that many good rewards but as you scale up to the top and if you get really lucky you can get like 10 gems you can get five gems and uh, there is the super lucky uh, reward which, which actually gives you 100 gems so make sure to log in every day because at a bare minimum you're getting an additional one gem per day so again Make sure to go ahead and log in and good luck with your lottery guys there's also the gem packs which we kind of knew was going to be going to be happening here and you do see that this uh gem sale is going to be concluding on may 26th so my assumption is on may 26th these will be refreshed into something else or uh maybe just a just a refill potentially in the shop it is fascinating um it does say here that there is a limited one-time purchase of 99 gems and i have a feeling this is probably a special anniversary pack that is going to be really cheap for 99 gems that's my assumption i don't know that but that's really cool that it's there but then of course you've got the big boy packs 300 gems you got the 200 gem packs with a bunch of legend tickets the 100 gems 50 gems and then the uh the other discounted packs you know the 123 you can purchase it six times i believe it's you know, normally 55 american usd for the 123 pack something like that uh, and of course it gives you a list of the characters you can pull from the uh from the legend tickets so they're going to be there they're not really for everyone i understand that but uh, at least they're there because it gives you a bit of a discount when you are purchasing a lot of gems now this is a really big one too they've added a whole bunch of level limit breaks for the Psy straw hats now I'm not gonna talk about them in this video because we'll be here forever I'll probably make a separate video in regards to this but all of these size straw hats are now amazing so if you if you ever get the opportunity to get these characters at level limit break 5 make sure to do that I believe Brook Robin Sanji and Zoro those are all available on the event island right now I believe we actually go over to the event island they should be potentially under the power up one right here uh this one right here the straw hat quest yeah so this quest allows you to drop uh Sanji Zoro Robin and Brook if you haven't done it yet I would suggest to do this and get them to level limit break five all of these size straw hats become absolutely amazing characters the cool thing about that is that they're all free to play and they're always boosted on treasure maps. They're going to be boosted in a lot of quests. So the fact that you just get access to these free to play units that are amazing now, make sure to do it because they're going to help you click content. And then finally, there is some more characters receiving some limit break expansions. I haven't really gone into much detail as to like what they actually get in terms of their expansions. Uh, most of these characters don't get really anything that that notable because you know these rare recruits don't see a lot of play the Kizuna characters eh, they're not that amazing um, but the rumble characters are the one you may want to look out for if these are rumble characters that you use often 
you probably should go ahead and expand them because they get additional stats, which means that they will tank easier and they do more damage in Pyrumble. So with all of that being said, that is going to wrap us up today for all of the anniversary news, at least for the initial release, the initial wave of the ninth anniversary. I am expecting more to come later on down the line, but of course uh, we have the big Sugar Fest starting tomorrow. We will have the Pirate King Adventures starting tomorrow and then a week after that. So next Friday, we'll get access to the Blitz Battle will be starting on that day and then i think probably the week after that will be the treasure map and then the kizuna will be the week after that so we have a lot to look forward to and there, there should be more characters that should be releasing over the next uh, few weeks and so but we'll have to wait and see how it all progresses but that is going to wrap it up for me thank you so much for watching the video if you guys did enjoy it make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below i'm that guys i'll see you guys within the next video